Alright guys, so welcome to this important transit update for the channel. As you can see in the title of this article, there it says 6 subway lines to see service changes next week as MTA starts installing modern signaling on the A, C, and E. The one they refer to modern signaling, obviously they are referring to CBTC, which the work will be done on the A and C, and as well as the E. So this article was posted yesterday from what i believe because today is the 13th but yes i could confirm so that obviously is the a at 34th street penn station and also in fact as we move on later on within this video you will see an example of how a transponder a transponder is placed onto the track at this specific station 34th street penn station so there it says, uh, subway riders should prepare for major snags in their commute next week as work begins on implementing modern signaling on the ACNE in the city. So starting at 9.49, I'm sorry, 9.45 p.m. on Friday, February the 17th, until the morning of Monday, February the 27th, strap hangers can expect significant service changes on the A, C, D, E, F, and M lines in the city. Uh, that's so the MTA can formally begin replacing Great Depression Era signaling technology on the 8th Avenue line uh, between Columbus Circle and High Street and replacing it with modern communications-based train control technology. So one thing that we have to note within this portion of the article is the first thing that is mentioned, and that is the service changes. So if anything, it's not that I am forcing my viewers on this channel, but what I'm trying to say here is I highly encourage, unless you are the viewer that is already aware of what's going to happen for the weekend that you're traveling. Let's say if you're traveling to the Bronx, Queens, whatever it is, and you already know what's going on with that specific line, then that's totally okay. Not a problem. But I'm talking about for the viewer that is planning to go somewhere for the weekend and likely doesn't have any idea what's going to go on within a specific line in terms of service change then i highly encourage you guys to join in uh, the live stream where i do every single friday night where i cover the service change for specific lines that are affected for that specific weekend and the reason why i am mentioning this is because the service change for this week is going to be for about 10 days straight so we're talking about it starting at 9 45 p.m on friday the 17th of this month and this will not go on until the morning of monday february 27th with which i assume that's probably going to end at 5 a.m that day on february 27th so because of that long long work that's going to be going on with the acne portion of the system because of that you're going to see changes on the a c d e f and m lines and so one thing that we have to note here is when they refer to Great Depression Era signaling technology, they're referring to the fixed block signaling technology, where one of the difficulties of those signal systems is that, first of all, it's not that it's becoming obsolete, but the technology of that kind of system is just too old. It is starting to get a little bit complicated to maintain. You guys also notice that. There's always signal trouble or switch problems going on at specific portions of the subway. So that's definitely becoming an issue. And if anything, what they want to do is obviously do the transition from fixed block signaling to CBTC. Yes, we could also say that for CBTC, it is not perfect. We have seen certain times where the power goes out within a specific portion of where you have a line that has CBTC line technology. And because of that, it has caused a massive amount of delay. So we could also say that it is not perfect, but we could say that at least in terms of the technology, it is modern and at least up to date. And we are going to see that 
when we preview a video courtesy from the MTA.info channel. So there it says, uh, February's work will not, well, I'm sorry, will not. February's work will take place between 42nd and 59th Streets. The good thing to note is that uptown service on the A, C, and E will not be impacted. So the snag will most significantly affect M train riders. So here's the thing. You guys will notice that whenever an article covers a specific service change on lines, you're going to see that this is really complicated to read, and I will not go over it in this fashion. In a press release that I will show you guys in a bit, it will be broken down in a more readable way so that you could guys so that you guys could further understand what's going on. So what I will rather mention in this article is this where it says the augmented service will enable critical work to begin in earnest on CBTC installation on 8th Avenue. It would replace the pre-World War II analog signals, fixed block signaling, which the subway has long relied on with modernized wireless communication arrays that enables the MT to know exactly where a train is at any given time. Which I think that what they're referring to there is the rail control center, which I believe in that facility or in that building is where they could see where the trains are. So agency brats say that will enable them to safely run trains closer together and hence run more trains, period. So currently, CBTC is only installed on the L and 7, of course. Both have seen substantial increases in on-time performance since being equipped with the newfangled 10. So that's definitely a positive of what we've been noticing in terms of CBTC being equipped on specific lines. And those examples would be the LM7. We have been noticing that ever since they have gotten that transition to the new technology, service has improved in terms of on-time performance going up. And not just that, trains pulling in as fast as, what, three to four minutes or even on a really good day, maybe even two to three minutes. So that's what you talk about performance that you expect in today's uh, in today's era. And that's what you're getting at from CBTC when it works good. When it works good. Like I said, it's not perfect, but at least it gets the job done. However, there is something really fascinating in this portion of the article, even though we already covered it in a press release, I believe last year in December, where there it says that uh, the MT will approve a contract to fully install CBTC on the line, on the G line by 2027. So this is really good because if anything, as you guys have been realizing, with the G specifically, we've been noticing that the G has been neglected by the MTA, especially when we look at decades or recent history. We're talking about the G having what? Four car trains, uh, the G where it had a limited service even though in the past it used to go to 71st uh, continental avenue it used to go there but of course because of low demand and low ridership they had to stumble up and start shaking up the line so that it goes a shorter distance again because of the low demand it had in the past however up to date we're talking about at least these past four years the g line has been a different story you have been noticing that there has been a lot of people moving in the areas that are surrounded by the G. And so because of that, we've been noticing that it has been the complete opposite. We've been seeing more train cars on the G train. We've been seeing more service go on on the G train. And not just that, the man has been pulled on with the G where you're also having uh, maybe you could say right now elected officials, politicians, uh, transit advocate groups where they're saying that hey you know what it's time that they do something at least with the G because a lot of people depend on it and so because of that they feel that it is time that it gets something and f the one thing that we also have to realize about the G is that it's one of the only lines that could go from Manhattan I'm sorry one of the only lines that don't go to Manhattan but but the only lines that could only go from Brooklyn to Queens and that's it because at the moment, it starts from church, and it ends in Court Square. So it's quite an important line, given the areas where it stops at. Because the areas where it stops at, when you go up and you leave the station, 
we're talking about specific areas that are transit deserts. And so when that is the case, you want to make sure that the line that covers transit deserts have the best technology as possible. And we've been seeing that on the G in these past couple of years. It has been, what, the R68s mostly, even though way back in the past you had the R46. Well, at least right now, it's safe to say that now they have the R160s, which is definitely a good look. And not just that, maybe the reason why they went that way is because they knew that at a specific point, the G was going to get a project done to its signaling system. But here we could confirm that CBTC will be on the G fully by 2027. So that's really, really good. So last year, the MTA shuttered weekend service on the F line in Southern Brooklyn to begin installing the technology on that corridor. Finishing touches are being put on the installation of the technology on the EFM and R line in Queens Boulevard. But the tech on that stretch, which is installed by the German multinational Siemens, or as they say it, Siemens, is riddled with glitches. So that definitely is a problem. Now, the one thing that we have to say right now is if you see the text that is in red, that means if you click on it, it's going to lead you to an other article from M New York. So what you will, would refer to these is actually hyperlinks. If you click on it, it will lead you to a page dedicated to what that is talking about. So the problem with the Queens Boulevard line CBTC project is that whoever is in charge of this, which is Siemens, unfortunately, we are seeing that there are glitches going on. And so because of the glitches, it is... I guess losing its reliability and also delaying the full conversion on that line. Yes, because I've been assuming that it's been a while where we haven't really heard the MTA say uh, the project of CBTC installation is done on Queens Boulevard. So it's been a while we haven't heard that. But here we could see a good indication into why that is the case. So we are seeing delays going on because of glitches in that project of modernizing uh, modernizing the signal system on that portion of the line. So in reality, that doesn't really look good on paper because the one thing that you would expect is that you have this done as soon as possible, and not just that, and also that the reliability of this project for it to be at 100%. But if we're looking at stuff like this where you're going to have glitches going on, this could also give you an indication of what's to come in the future when we look at other lines getting this technology onto the specific region of the, of the system. So that definitely leaves a lot of question marks, but hopefully they could fix that. I'm pretty sure they should. So towards the end of this article, there it says on the 8th Avenue line, the MTA says CBTC will be fully installed by 2024. So that at least is a positive. And also that at least should be a really good thing. Because if anything, CBTC on the 8th Avenue line needs to be done. And it has to be there. Given the amount of importance that you have on the 8th Avenue line. You have the ACME. You're talking about three really important lines that serve its respective destinations and the positive is that it's going to be done by next year right now we are in 2023 so this should be done by 2024 so that's really positive and not just that there it says uh, that's just in time for the rollout of the brand new r211 cars factory equipped with cbtc tech which are expected to begin their tenure on the anc by the end of this year so the r211 will replace the r46 so before I look, so first of all, before I even get to any of that, first of all, for the viewers that checked out the video of the R211 latest update, I truly appreciate for all the viewers that checked out that video. It got one of the best views that I've had for a video that I've done in a while. I saw the statistics and I noticed that it went to up a thousand and that is fantastic i was amazed that that occurred that should also show you guys how much i commit to this channel to provide you guys with as much as information in terms of the transit world here in new york city so when i saw that i was really happy i was really glad not just for the views but the fact that the interaction 
between the community of this channel and of course between viewers that are familiar with this channel or viewers that are starting to become aware of what this channel is all about so i'm really happy that the community of this channel is growing and that i'm happy that in that specific video there was a lot of interaction between viewers so i definitely like to see stuff like that it's really helpful and of course for the viewers that shared the video and for the amount of likes that i got for the r211 video that means a lot when i saw that that also gives me a great indication of the progress that we have been doing on this channel so i was really glad to see that and so like i said my thanks go uh, to the viewers for the effort that you guys put in by checking out the video which i definitely appreciate but the other reason why i'm mentioning that specific video is because i did get a lot of feedback from viewers saying that the r211 will be debuted on the anc first again anc first because after that what they intend to do is that they tend to or they intend to put the r211s in the staten island railway which is the plan because one thing is for sure the anc even before they got the new ticks onto the lines the anc used to have the r46 and the r32 Yes, you did have a rare occasion where they had the R68, but on the C, especially back in the past, it used to have the R32. Mainly on the A, you used to have the R46. Sometimes on both lines, though, you did have the R68, but at least those three fleets were on those two lines. And what's interesting is that, yes, the transition came where uh, the R179s came in, but of course, you also have to note that there were certain times where the R160s were also on the ANC. But because of failure of compatibility between the train car and the third rail technology, I believe this was on the Rockaways. This happened to not only the R160, but this also happened to the R179 as well, where it had issues at first with the compatibility within the third rail. So because of that, they had to stop using it on the Rockaways portion and rather just send it to uh, Ozone Park because of that reasoning. But of course, eventually they were able to fix that issue. But as the transition kept kept and kept going, there were issues with the doors. You did notice that the Armand Terry Knights had issues with that. So more issues came and lots of frustration was caused because of that. But as we speak right now, R179s are mostly on the C, and if not, then there definitely are R46s still. Same goes for the A. Some you will see that have the R179, and some will have the R46. We're talking about sets here. And so at a specific point, you are going to see that the R211s will be placed on the ANC. So you're wondering, what's going to happen with the R179? What is going to happen with those current trains with those current new tech trains that are on the ANC, where are they going to send that to? More than likely, it's going to go to a line that has CBTC. More than likely, it's going to go to the E, the F, the M, or the R. Again, depending where it's going to go. In regards to it going to the B and Q, I am not sure. As far as things go, like the R211s, I think more than likely they're going to go to the Q because of the fact that all the line on the queue has only R46. And not just that, the same goes for the N and the same goes for the W in some case. So I definitely see that going there. And in regards to other lines like the BND, who also have been with SMEs for a while, at some point they're going to have to have a new tech equipment. Hopefully uh, that's the case. So I don't want to continue on with that. But this definitely has a lot to do with this because... If this goes on schedule and everything goes fine in terms of the installation of the new technology system onto the signals, you will have the R211s on the ANC. That's definitely perfect. You definitely want to have that combination onto the system where you're going to have the newest of new trains running on modern signals. So that's one thing that we definitely need. So a fun fact before we keep it going, there it says the R211 will replace the R46, which dates back to the Abe 
Beam Administration and is some of the oldest rolling stock within the MTA's portfolio. So the one thing to note is you did notice, guys, that over here I said that that is truly too confusing to read. And so that is the reason why I don't want to cover that here. However, I will refer to the press release that you see here. Now, what are we looking at within this press release? We're looking at what will be the service adjustments for specific lines. This critical work is being done over the holiday week to ensure minimal impact to customers. Due to the holiday service will only be affected on four weekends, four, four weekdays. Uh, ridership on Tuesday through Friday, that week has historically been 7% lower than typical weekday ridership. So customers are advised of the following service impacts. The positives to note already is that at least Uptown AC and E trains will operate normally. So that is the good news here where you'll have all Uptown AC and E trains operating on a normal schedule. However, here's where the things change. So starting from Tuesday, February 21 uh, through Friday, February 24th, a day after my birthday, uh, there it says downtown C trains will run express from 145th to Canal Street. Downtown E trains will run on the M from 5th Avenue 53rd to West 4. Then after that, you have downtown D trains will run local from 145th to 59th Street, Columbus Circle. Select F trains will operate via the E between Roosevelt and 4750th Streets, Rockefeller Center. And you do have an asterisk there saying rush hour specifically. So the first one is a positive if you are someone that goes on to see, well, it's going to go express from 145th to Canal Street. If you're a spectator of the E train, that really isn't that much of a change because the E and the M have a similar route pattern, especially if you're talking about from Manhattan to Queens. Because if you look at this route, they're basically the same thing because the E and the M practically run on that same portion. The only thing is it's going to switch from the 8th Avenue track to the 6th Avenue track in that case for uh, the E. Uh, the loser here always tends to be the D, unfortunately, where it will be running local uh, from 145th to 59th Street Columbus Circle. So that really stinks. Brooklyn bound during morning rush hour. Queens bound during afternoon rush hour. So here it says that M trains will run via the J and the Z between the Lancy Street, Essex Street, and Chamber Street. M trains will terminate at Chamber Street. That definitely is interesting to note. However, there is no M service between Essex Street and Forest Hill 71st Avenue. So that definitely will take an impact for those that want to take the M to Queens. So that definitely is not really going to look good. So that also says what is going to go on with the R. Will there be more trains heading towards the R train or will there be more service? Because I'm pretty sure that the R cannot do the work by itself. It can't. So that will be interesting on what the MTA will do in that case. Uh, downtown A trains will run express from Con Columbus Circle to Canal Street at all hours, including late nights, weekends, and President's Day holiday. Downtown C trains will run express from 59th Street to Canal Street. Downtown E trains will run on the M from 5th Avenue 53rd to West 4. Downtown A trains will run express from Columbus Circle to Canal Street at all hours, including late nights. President's Day weekend only, so 9.45 p.m. Friday, February the 17th, until Tuesday, 5 a.m. February the 21st. F trains will run on the E between Roosevelt Avenue and Rockefeller Center. Weekend of February 25th and the 27th from 8 a.m. 11.59 p.m. Saturday, February 25th, until 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday, February 26th. M trains will run on the F and Q between Metropolitan and 96th Street, 2nd Avenue. So for those that were able to grasp all of that information, and that's really good for you guys. However, for those that couldn't be able to grasp all of that, the good thing about this day and age about the MTA is that they have improved communication drastically in these last couple of years. So if you need information regarding service updates and information here you have the following opportunities or ways to connect with the system so the first one is obviously downloading the my mta app which is available for both 
uh, the App Store and the Play Store. All you got to do is access either one of them. So if you have an iPhone, go to the App Store and search My MTA app. If you have Google, if you have an Android phone, go to the Play Store and search for My MTA app and download it to get all your information. On this website, so mta.info, the service status box will give you the source for the latest status for each line. You also have uh, the live subway map which gives you the real-time position of trains and, of course, service changes. If you click on this link, which is a hyperlink, it will lead you to that map already. And for Twitter, you could follow them at, at NYCT Subway for updates on service and customer support. So this actually would be a good idea. So for anyone, let's say, for example, if you're out there and is more than likely lost and you don't know where you're going, or if you want to know why there is a delay going on for a specific line that you're on at the moment then the one thing you could definitely do is follow them on that page once again and if you want to know what's going on you simply have to tweet out mentioning their page and then asking them what is going on why are there delays why hasn't the train come what is going on so if anything twitter is a really good way of communication within the system and not just that, you also have WhatsApp, where you could also contact them through that application. And what's good here is that you could get customer service support, and as well as in your own language, depending what language do you speak, so that also is definitely good. And, of course, for those that are traditional and old school, and if you want to get support, then you would have to call uh, that phone number to get more information. So what I'll do now is... I will check out the pictures of what is going on right now in terms of the construction of CBTC. So this is how it looks right now. So you guys did recall that earlier in this video, I did mention that I was going to show pictures of the current project status of CBTC on the 8th Avenue portion. Here we have an example of the CBTC transponder placed onto the track. Here you have a picture of it, so let's continue on. Here you can see crew members planning out what they intend to do for the next couple of uh, portions within the 8th Avenue portion. Here you can see that is, I believe, they're transitioning to fiber optic cable installation because I believe these here could either be fiber optic or they're probably older uh, cabling technology. Who knows what, what it could be. Uh, this over here has to, has to do something with uh, the CBTC technology. This panel that you see here. It definitely doesn't have to do with anything electric. It has to do with the communication of CBTC and the signals itself. Here are more pictures. This is an example of what you could say right now might be from fixed block signaling. This definitely looks really old. And... At a specific point, you will consider this to be obsolete. So that's what we're looking at there. There are more pictures. Here we can see more. So in that video that I will show in a bit, gives you a better indication of what this is. Because most of the pictures that you just saw here, you guys probably don't know what it is. And that's, and that's perfectly fine. This right here, I could definitely tell you right now, has to be a relay room where they handle electrical and mechanical relays. This, I could definitely assure you that that is an electrical and mechanical relay because I did uh, study that when I was in college, when I did my associates. We were studying relays, how it works, and what is the engineering behind it. And here you can see there are just a bunch of cables connected to it. And it is interesting because I do recall in one of the laboratory courses, we had to do these things, and it wasn't easy at all, guys. It was really difficult, but that is an example of an electrical mechanical relay. This has, this has to do with the switches that involves the current signaling system of fixed block technology. And I believe from here, it shows you the transition, because this that you see here now is the Avenue X relay room, where now they're handling the more modern technology system. And I believe that was a blueprint that I believe 
So these are uh, the power walls for the CVTC that you see here. And let's continue on. This compared to uh, what was it? So let's go back. I think it's over here. Here we're talking about old technology. Old technology that's about to be obsolete. So you see this here, right? You compare this to uh, what was it? To this, it's a monumental difference. It's a, a century of a difference. This is what we're talking about in terms of cable management because this this right here is quality cable management and this is what you need because in fact this actually reminds me of how a nic room looks or a server room where you have all your uh, networking routers all the switches all of the servers that you have within the building that you're working at this almost looks like it it has the same uh, concept the way how the cables and the way how it's organized here so that definitely is good and i believe these are just more and more pictures so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to that video where it provides you uh, the update regarding the cbtc update on three lines well not three lines but on three projects that are ongoing right now within the system <laughs> Most of our subway system still uses 1930s outdated signaling technology. So there you go, right away, 1930s. Old obsolete technology. Fixed block signaling. We're talking about a technology that has been here since the 1930s. That is way too old. Way too old. And look, right, right now we're in 2023. At a specific point, we're going to be in 2030. So this is going to be almost nearing a century. So that definitely is a sign where we got to replace it. So there you have it. These are the three current projects. The one on the F cover line, which mostly is on the elevated portion of the line. It begins, well, it begins elevated from Ditmas Avenue until Stillwell. That's for the F. And then on the uh, 8th Avenue portion, there you see it from Columbus Circle to High Street. That's that's pretty good. And then on the Queens Boulevard line, that is uh, the last of the three projects. First, let's take a look at what's happening at the 8th Avenue project. This is the, the new 34th Street and 8th Avenue signal relay room. And this is what it looks like in the beginning stages of the construction. On uh, my left hand side and your right hand side is the power wall with all of the new power and power distribution for the new signal system will come into play uh, later on when we uh, wire it up and, and, and cut in the power. Uh, behind me is the cable plant. Uh, all of the cables that come from the field and they're all collected in this room and they'll be uh, distributed on racks. Definitely, it's not going to look like that once it's done. That's how it looks right now. Of course, at a specific point, they're going to organize that. But can you imagine working with that and trying to organize? Yeah, that'll take you quite a while. Distributed on racks. Eventually, these rooms will be filled with these relay racks, power, and other equipment. We'll see what that looks like later on when we talk about the QBL project. This is what's called an entrance rack. So these cables will come in and be terminated on the entrance racks. Building rooms like these and pulling the cable to them amounts to a significant portion of the project. There isn't much to see in the tunnel, and that's the point. CBTC is a more automated system, which means there's less wayside equipment and therefore less to maintain. So what you're seeing here is a contractor splicing fiber optic cables to the wayside radio. You notice that what they just mentioned there was they're using fiber optic cable as the choice for the cabling and to connect it uh, through that external rack that you saw a couple of seconds ago I believe the rack was uh, right here this is the rack that they're talking about and they're using fiber cables to connect it on that so really good that they're using fiber optic technology that is the most recent up-to-date cabling technology that they use for communications especially for internet but as well as uh, for uh, signals especially if we're talking about a uh, transit systems they're also going to be using uh, fiber optics so that's really good that they're doing that 
I'll have approximately 70 of these uh, radio cases to splice. One of the unique features of the 8th Avenue project are these axle counters. They monitor the length of trains as they pass over them as an extra layer of safety, and they also help work trains safely navigate CBTC areas. The next steps for our construction team is to start installing the switches, and then after that will be the testing and commissioning of all of the wayside uh, elements. The Culver line is a little further along. It's an elevated line, so work is limited to daylight hours. But most of the cable has been pulled, and most of the wayside equipment is installed. A lot of the work now is taking place inside the buildings like this one. We built three new buildings on the project. We built a new relay room, three-story building at Avenue X inside the yard. At Ditmas Avenue, we also built a new interlocking relay room. And at uh, Bay Parkway, we installed a new CIH. Okay, so at, CIA, so at Bay Parkway, they installed the CIH. At Ditmas Avenue, they installed the interlocking relay room. And then at Avenue X, they did mention that they installed a relay room uh, there too. So that is really good you did notice that in certain portions of the video they did uh, mention that there are k let me see if i could get that part it's an elevated line so work is limited to daylight hours but yeah. most so where they mentioned the cable tray so let's just mute this momentarily where they mentioned the cable tray and where they mentioned where they have the antennas placed so once again these antennas are responsible of communicating the nearest relay room and of course the real control center of the trains that are within that specific portion of the F. So here is the transponder placed onto the track and this again I would assume here might be either a switch or a signal either one so I can't be wrong either one and you have seen that on the F at specific portions specifically at 18th Avenue I've seen where you do have the CBTC signals up and working so that's definitely good and by seeing stuff like this is definitely a good sign i think i've seen this before but again according to the transit worker that you saw he said that that is uh the relay room that is at uh Dittmas avenue or the interlocking relay room that is there i definitely have seen this building before and where they bring you to this portion of the video this actually is uh the relay room that they have at avenue x and like i said what a difference what what a, what a difference uh nearly a century makes or in terms of technology you're noticing that the organization looks much easier the way how the racks are organized looks way much easier the way how the relays are set that also looks damn good and the way how things are designed now it's meant to be much more efficient and much more organized to use. So I definitely like that they're doing this. Avenue X, workers are wiring in the relay racks. All these cables come from wayside equipment, along the cable tray, into the building where they terminate on these racks. It may look sloppy, but each one of these wires is carefully trained. You see, that's sloppy. Right there, that's sloppy, but however, that that you see here, where you have the mouse, that's definitely organized. Traced, organized, and labeled. In another room, the zone controllers are being installed. These are the real brains behind CBTC. They constantly communicate with trains via wayside antennas to track their location and speed. It's tedious work, but if everything could... They constantly... These are the real brains behind CBTC. They constantly communicate with trains via wayside antennas to track their location and speed. It's tedious work, but if everything continues at the current pace, the Culver Line should start testing and commissioning in June of 22. So that, that the Queen that you saw over here, the person just mentioned that it is highly responsible for communications uh, between uh, the technology itself and, of course, communicating it with the trains. So that is important. Line is nearly finished. They're now in the process of testing and commissioning. So we're at the 71st Forest Hill uh, Master Tower. The folks here are actually operating the hot panel we use to control the train uh, movement through the Queen's Corridor here uh, from Union Turnpike to Roosevelt. 
As the project comes to a close, power panels like this one become obsolete as CBTC technology shifts to computers or soft panels. So you did hear that, uh, where you have this facility where they control uh, the signal aspects and everything regarding uh, fixed block. They did say that at a specific point, it will become obsolete. And now once they transition to CBTC, that is going to be computerized. That definitely speaks volumes. We'll leave it here for our the master control center. That's what he said, or the master control room. That definitely sounds very important. Backup feature, but most of that will be available to control from RCC. This location is called Queens Plaza Relay Room. In this relay room, basically, we have a relay system that controls the interlocking and the switch operations, as well as the uh, monitoring the track circuits here. One of the biggest challenges on this contract is interoperability. Interoperability is the ability of equipment supplied by different companies to work together. In our case, it's a communication standard that was developed to ensure that all CBTC equipment can work anywhere in the system, no matter who manufactures or installs it. Since there are multiple trains sharing the QBL, manufacturers or installs it. it. Looks like uh, the manufacturers that are going to be responsible for the projects are either Siemens or, or Thales. Again, depending that's if that's how you pronounce it. Interesting that they do mention that here. Since there are multiple trains sharing the QBL, interoperability was a necessary hurdle. Here is the CBTC cabinet. And these are the processes that are basically uh, performing. Is the CBTC cabinet? That's what that's what it was. I forgot what I meant. I th I think I said control. No, it's actually the cabinet. The tracking and the movement of the trains. These zone controls communicate constantly with the trains and the rail control center, so they can accurately track the location of all trains on the CBTC line in real time. CBTC gives us the visualization of the whole system. So now we're able to see from terminal to terminal where trains are at any given minute, and we're able to control how close they are running together. What does this all add up to? It adds up to a safe environment, and it adds up to trains pulling into the station when the customer needs it. Outfitting the system with CBTC while minimizing impact to customers is not an easy task. The vast network of over 600 track miles means there are unique challenges to each contract. The lessons learned and the best practices that emerge as we advance toward modernization make us faster and more efficient at installing the system. So there you go. Really helpful video coming from the NTA.info website. So once again, that was the CBTC update and it's interesting because it's coming from a separate channel I don't think that's the MTA.info channel it's the MTA construction and development communication channel which doesn't have that much subscribers sub surprisingly I don't know why that's the case but whatever I guess so there you go that was quite an important portion uh, up next for just a couple of seconds I will just show you guys how these service changes will look like within the map this is how the service change will reflect on the map. So as we see on the sea in the light blue portion, local to express, definitely C trains will win during this track work. For the D, definitely will not win because they will go from express to local. And they're going to be going from express to local from 145th to 59. So that really stinks. For the C, it's going to be going express from 145th to Canal Street. Uh, from what I remember, the E will be going between 5th Avenue, 53rd, and West 4th, which is the typical pattern in which its brother line at this point, M, would go on. So that definitely isn't that much of a surprise there. However, one of the biggest changes is that the M will be suspended and it will be rerouted, where the M will not run between Essex Street and 71st. Instead, it will be going via the J and the Z to Chamber Street. So that's just one thing to note. So that was the depiction of the service change on how it looks on the map. And so once again, regarding the change, it will begin this week on Friday, 9.45 p.m. And it will go on until the 27th of this month. It will end at 5 a.m. on Monday on February 27th. So with that, that does it for this 
Transit Update video, like, share, and subscribe.